So, so the other standard we had in practice um, was the FDA approved regimen came out of ECOG 4599, carbopaclitaxel in bevacizumab. And we saw Empower 150 near and dear to my heart. I'm gonna ask Ben to, to review it. Uh, but, but that was the kind of the other standard FDA approved platform in this non-squamous, non-small cell space. And, and that kind of led to Empower 150. Yeah, so I, first of all, there's a lot of rationale to look at this synergy between PDL1 and anti-angiogenesis. There's some preclinical work that has shown that VEGF upregulates T regulatory cells, it upregulates myelo-derived suppressor cells, both are immunosuppressive. Uh, and by giving an anti-angiogenic drug, you can reverse that immunosuppression that may augment uh, the PD-01 drug. And so Empower 150 uh, was looking at this synergy. It was a very large trial. It was more than 1,200 patients. Um, that were 1,202. 1,202, <laughs> thank you for the correction. Uh, for non-squamous, non-small cell lung cancer, advanced stage patients that were randomized to three arms. Uh, arm A was carboplatin, paclitaxel, atezolizumab. Arm B was carboplatin, paclitaxel, bevacizumab, atezolizumab, quadruplet therapy. And arm C was the ECOG 4599 backbone. Um, C for control. C for control, <laughs> yeah. uh, that's good, good mnemonic yeah. there. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, of our carboplatin, paclitaxel, and bevacizumab. Um, and impressively, we saw uh, in the intent to treat analysis an improvement in response rate uh, between B and C. And I think the primary analysis that we have so far is between arm B and C, answering the question, what does atezolizumab do to the carboplatin, paclitaxel, bevacizumab backbone, that ECOG 4599 backbone. And in the intent to treat analysis, response rates were higher in the quadruplet therapy in arm B. Uh, the response rate was 64% versus 48%. I would argue uh, in, in outside of an actionable mutation, showing a response rate that high is quite impressive. Uh, the PFS, uh, the, there were differences as well. Uh, the hazard ratio for PFS was 0.62, 8.3 months versus 6.8. And interestingly, at least in the ESMO IO conference uh, that initially presented, you presented this data, there was some interesting subset analysis for the PFS. There was a benefit, uh, pronounced benefit uh, for patients with liver mets. Uh, the benefit, by the way, crossed all pdl one expressors. Uh, but there was a more pronounced benefit in, in liver mets, and I think there's a lot of looking to why that is and going back preclinically to understand this. Uh, and then, importantly, this trial did allow EGFR and ALK rearranged lung cancer patients. I think there were about 100 patients that had a mutation. Actually, about, there were 150, <laughs> about 50 each arm. 50 in each arm. Yeah. And, um, you know, there was a benefit to adding a tezolizumab. Uh, in that, uh, to the backbone, uh, and that was surprising to see. I think this is one of the first trials we have with these particular genotypes that we see a benefit by adding immunotherapy. And then we'll, of course, have an update uh, uh, on OS um, at this meeting. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if you want to, you know, take the baton here, given that you'll be presenting this data in two days. Yeah, it, it, uh, you know, there was a press release in March that yeah. said it reached uh, significance for overall survival. Yeah. That, in the statistical design, that reaching overall survival superiority for arm B versus C allowed us to go look at arm A versus C, and we'll present that, that data um, at this meeting. Um, so, um, it, I just want to make, make a comment on the um, liver mets in the uh, EGFR out, the rationale for kind of looking at those as a yeah. uh, um, uh, special populations. If you look at, uh, you know, what we're all familiar with the uh, Japanese trial in EGFR mutants of adding bevacizumab to er erlotinib, yep. and, and, and we'll get an update of the OS on that, but I think the uh, PFS was fairly impressive, so there was a rationale for thinking about that that may be a population that may gain benefit. And then going back to ECOG 4599, if you look at the forest plots in patients who have liver mets, liver mets is a negative or a poor prognostic feature, and there was a clear benefit adding BEV to carbopotin paclitaxel in ECOG 4599. So, so that was kind of the rationale for looking at those populations. And again, um, uh, you know, we, we, we saw some I interesting data, particularly in the uh, on oncogenic driver subsets. Yeah. I, I want to add one other observation. I don't know if this is a, a, a bias on my part or if it's real. When we look at the PFS curves, um, the separation seems to get magnified over time, um, pretty much after the chemotherapy is concluded. And uh, one wonders if that is evidence of a special synergy between angiogenesis inhibition and the immunotherapeutic agent. Uh, and certainly that's now borne out by uh, survival. 
and the control arm pretty much matches the data that we observed in the original adenocarcinoma cohort of 1594. We're going from 14 months mm -hmm. to 19, 19 months overall, 19 which months. Mm -hmm. before 189 would have been considered absolutely astounding, but now in context, it's okay, it's another positive trial.